shop today about to start on a little project. Now I didn't share this with you, but I did decide to take the differentials out. After I, I saw a leaking seal, I was like, let's take the differentials out, let's overhaul them, let's put new seals in them, star washers, everything. But while we have them out, let's go ahead and put in an ARB air locker. And so both diffs have the air lockers installed. I'm just buttoning them up. I gotta clean them. I gotta install the seals. Uh, I picked up the seals from Hummer Parts Guy, uh, Star Washers, Hummer Parts Guy. And I've gotta take all the, the bolts off, clean them with a wire wheel, just get all the uh, yellow Loctite off of them. Um, put the seals in, yokes, put in, uh, put the diff covers back on and make sure everything's right. Test them, I haven't uh, tested them yet. So stick with me, I'm gonna play around with these diffs for a little bit. And uh, once I get them done, we'll put them back in the truck. And in a couple of weeks, hopefully we'll be able to test them out. Quick update, putting the seals in, that's the axle uh, output seal goes around the axle so I, th I was really excited this time because uh, I bought the actual tool that you use slides in put in the seal well it broke so this is a um, Kent Moore they're usually about hundred and twenty dollars I found this one on eBay for 20 thought it was gonna be really easy ended up putting duct tape around it because it cracked um, it cracked right there from trying to put these on and beat them in they don't work so last time I did it, luckily I didn't know that tool even existed and I made my own. So what I want to do is give you a quick tip about this seal and putting these seals in because very common on these trucks does it leak out of this seal. I didn't get on your brakes and um, things like that. So take a, a piece of two inch PVC pipe, whatever length you want. Um, when I did it, the differential was in the truck, so I made this really long so I could get to it from uh, without having to be under the truck. I could get to it from where the tire is. And then you can either get a two inch coupling, which fits beautifully on that seal, right? Beautifully. Or you can get one that uh, the two inch will fit in and then it's threaded here and you can see it's a lot thicker. And the reason that is is so when I'm beating on it, um, it is a lot less likely chance of breaking. The only thing I will tell you is last time I did this, see this is the end cap, so like this is what you're hitting. I had to hit it so hard that this actually broke. So when you put it all together, when you put this on, that on, and uh, this, so that's kind of the tool you're slipping over and then you're going to hammer it. Stuff this with paper towels, so if you do break this PVC, it doesn't shatter and go into your bearing. But uh, it's just two inch PVC fits perfect on these seals um, to drive them in. So just a little tip, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot. If I can't do it, I've got one more trick I can show you, um, but I have to remove a bracket off the truck and I really just don't wanna do that. I'd love for this to work, so we'll see. Quick update, putting the seals in, that's the axle uh, output seal, goes around the axle. So I, th I was really excited this time because uh, I bought the actual tool that you use slides in put in the seal well it broke so this is a um, Kent Moore they're usually about hundred and twenty dollars I found this one on eBay for 20 thought it was gonna be really easy ended up putting duct tape around it because it cracked um, it cracked right there from trying to put these on and beat them in they don't work so last time I did it luckily I didn't know that tool even existed and I made my own so what I want to do is give you a quick tip about this seal and putting these seals in because very common on these trucks does it leak out of this seal I didn't get on your brakes and um, things like that so take a, a piece of two inch PVC pipe whatever length you want um, when I did it the differential was in the truck so I made this really long so I could get to it from uh, without having to be under the truck I could get to it from where the tire is and then you can either get a two inch coupling, which fits beautifully on that seal, right? Beautifully. Or you can get one that uh, the two inch will fit in and then it's threaded here and you can see it's a lot thicker. And the reason that is is so when I'm beating on it, um, it is a lot less likely chance of breaking. The only thing I will tell you is last time I did this, see this is the end cap, so like this is what you're hitting. I had to hit it so hard that this actually broke. So when you put it all together, when you put this on, that on, and uh, this, so that's kind of the tool you're slipping over and then you're gonna hammer it. Stuff this with paper towels, so if you do break this PVC, it doesn't shatter and go into your bearing. But uh, it's just two inch PVC 
fits perfect on these seals um, to drive them in. So just a little tip. I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. If I can't do it, I've got one more trick I can show you, um, but I have to remove a bracket off the truck, and I really just don't want to do that. I'd love for this to work, so we'll see. Ta-da! So the seal is in. Now I will tell you, this, oh, this tool, don't buy that tool. That tool's garbage. It cracks, if it'll zoom. It's cracked. Don't buy this tool. eBay, 100 bucks, whatever. Build this tool. Opening on the end, oh, I didn't shove paper towels down it. Ah, do as I say, not as I do. Put a flat cap on it. I literally stick it over there, hammered it. Now what happened to me is I couldn't get it set right. So it was always a little off. So what I did was I took just this, laid it on where I needed it and just kind of tweaked wherever I had to flatten it and balance it out at. And it took a um, 45 ounce dead blow hammer and a good bit of hammering, but it finally uh, seated itself. Do remember, pack the inside lip with grease. You can kind of see it in there, it's green. Pack that inside lip with grease, so when you put the, um, I guess it's the yoke over there, uh, it can spin and not have to worry about nothing. And then on the outside, paint a little bit of aviation form of gasket sealant on there, it's like glue. And so there is no way, you can kind of see it a little bit down in there, there is no way that that's going to leak out of this um, outside rim area where they're always leak from. So don't buy the really expensive tool. Buy the $8 worth of PVC pipe and use it. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this thing over to the other side and we'll keep going. All right, I'm going to show you how to set one of these seals up. So first thing, I'm going to get my grease gun, put a nice big glob of marine grease inside that seal there's a channel i'm just gonna kind of go and get it started in there try to keep it in the channel the best you can let's see oh sorry out of view hate when people do that so i'll try not to but i'm not paying too much attention to the camera so i'm just filling in the channel trying to get it so when I put it all back together it's got some grease on it there we go and so now the hole inside there is packed with grease Let me wipe my finger off I'm gonna clean the face a little bit and then I'm fine on the back I don't really care too much about that I have had people tell me you can actually pack grease on the spring in here and it'll help from the spring breaking or coming off when you put everything together. Um, now that that's on, I'm going to use this Forma Gasket Aviation uh, Sealant and this is where it gets really sticky, really messy, um, but it's got a little paintbrush and boy you don't need much. Just dab it on there. And then smooth it out. Dab it on there. Smooth it out. And this stuff, I mean, while you're working with it, will get pretty tacky. But um, I promise you, with this on here, it is not going to leak. And this is what, from what I understand, the military actually puts this same exact thing on. So you know that's nice and once you get it on so there you go I've got it all the way around you know real thin layer and uh, I've got the grease inside now I'm just gonna lay it down like that on top and I'll kind of show you what that looks like in a second but I have to clean off my hands first all right there it is so all you want to do is kind of get it centered up so it's flat and level then you get your new awesome $8 driving tool. You put it on top, smack top of the hammer, repeat, repeat, repeat until it's flush all the way down. And uh, that's it. So that's what it looks like installed. You can see it's flat. It's got the, um, it's kind of puddled up. I put a, a little too much of the aviation sealant. You can see it around the edges and that stuff. Um, 
it'd be nearly impossible to get that out if I leave that like that. So I'll get a little brake cleaner on a rag and just kind of go around the edges, just try to clean up a little bit of that. But that's it. So both of these seals are done now, and uh, I'll show you a little bit more here in a minute. So everything was going great, and then I realized something. <clears throat> when I was putting in the seal, um, I was hammering in the seal, actually on this side over here, and this axle fell out, Whoop, just fell out. So I looked at it, got to examining it, and the bearing was not set all the way onto the axle. Well, then I come over here after putting it all together and I'm like, you know, less than a finger is exposed here, but about a finger width is exposed here. So looking at the axle, something was up. And what I think has happened is when they put this axle back together after putting in the air locker, to put the axles in, I think they just used a mallet and just hit the axle. Well, the problem with that is there's a bearing in there that comes onto the axle shaft, and if you hit the axle, it pushes out of the bearing and into the carrier further. So I know this one's right because I actually put it on a press and pressed the bearing on myself and pressed it into the housing the correct way. And we have about 0 .403 inches of difference. So this needs to come out almost half an inch uh, this direction. And so what I'm hoping I can do is put the yoke on or whatever that <clears throat> this is called, put that on. It fits because it's pressed up against the bearing, but the shaft is not out enough. So I'm hoping if I just use a, a saw, I mean a ratchet, and tighten this on, as I tighten it, hopefully it will pull the axle out of the carrier and seat it in the bearing because this thing will hold the bearing and the nut will pull the axle. Not ideal, I know but I'm trying from having to pull the brand new seals out of it and put new seals in it again. And on the front differential, it's that way on both sides. So I don't think the axle is set in the bearings correctly on that ax or that differential at all. I'm going to go ahead and try it and we'll see if it pulls it out. Back it off and do a measurement. That way, I should be able to see if it's pulling. It looks like it is. Let's check. The measurement we're looking for is 1.670. So let's see if that's what we have. I'm just measuring from the bearing to the start of the threads. We have 1.113 and we need 1.167. So, yeah, we only have a little bit to go. I think when I torque it down, that'll work. Very good. That, I was a little worried about that. So that does work. When you use the, the output flange, Put the output flange in and start tightening the nut. It holds the, um, the bearing and pulls the axle out as far as it needs to be. So that is great news. I'm going to um, do the two on the front and then we can move on and kind of continue. This stuff drives me nuts. I can't sleep at night. All right. They're all done. Everything is uh, put together. The axles are done, the seals are put in, the air lines are plumbed, uh, brackets for the brakes are on, I've got my transmission jack from Harbor Freight waiting, and it is, by the way, the perfect height to take one of these and put it right up where it needs to be. I did make a huge mess on the workbench. I do love, love, love that jig right there we made. Um, 
And so yeah, in the next video I'll be showing you how I'm going to put these in, install the brakes, and uh, that one will be a little trickier because it's going to be dark under there. But yeah, that's it. Oh, I will give you one more thing. Something different on the front differential. See this brake bracket and that brake bracket, and that one's kind of clocked down at the top. Um, that is the only bracket on the Humvee that is like that. The rear, they're equal, but because this side is so close to the frame that it is clocked. So um, I had to do some research on that, call Hummer Parts guy, ask him if that was right because I didn't want to have to take them out again. But everything's good, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put them in.